Hi guys, Ben here from carpfishingguide.com. In this episode, I'm going to be talking a little, to, uh, a little about surface fishing. Now, um, the weekend just gone, we had a lovely, lovely weather over here in England, um, especially in the southeast. Uh, we were probably having about 16 degrees odd, um, and it was a really, really nice day. Uh, so I went out Saturday, uh, took all the gear with me, and lo and behold, the, the fish weren't feeding off the bottom. I tried zigs, etc., but quite visually you could see the whole of the lake was um, was pretty much black basically with carp and they're all sunbathing on the top and enjoying the weather so my tactic uh, therefore has to be surface fishing so today I want to talk to you a little bit about surface fishing my setup that I've got um, what sort of setup you should be looking at the tackle the gear the bait etc and the method in which you're actually going to be able to catch carp from the top okay so the first thing to look at is your rods uh, your standard day-to-day -day cart rods, three, three and a half pound test curves, aren't going to do the job. They're far too heavy, uh, they're not sort of sensitive enough, as it were, for, uh, for things like surf surface fishing. Now I've got a backup rod which I take with me everywhere, uh, it's made by T TF Gear. Uh, this one is a compact all-rounder rod. Now it's a great rod to actually have just uh, packed away, it's a small light rod, it's a three-piece rod basically which you can just pack away anywhere. I normally keep it in the boot of my car. Um, I accompany this with a, another TF Gear product which is just a sort of small match reel basically. So the gear is much lighter, I mean the TF Gear is about two and a half, two and three quarters pounds so it's a lot lighter, a lot more sensitive for surface fishing. And the reason why we want this sensitivity is, sensitivity is because with surface fishing you want to be striking into the, uh, into the bait and uh, into, the, into the cart basically. And using something like a three, three and a half pound test curve is just going to be so hard it's going to rip that hook straight out of the carp's mouth. So we start using by li using lighter, more ref uh, more finer uh, finer tackle. I accompany this up with a really light mono, something like an eight pound um, eight pound um, stretch on there basically, and breaking strain. Sorry, eight pound breaking strain mono. And the reason why we use stuff like that is because if we were to use something like a fluorocarbon, it's going to start sinking. And obviously we don't want that because we're fishing on the surface. I accompany that with my hook link, which is this stuff. It's made by Gardner. It's called Zig Link. There's many other sort of um, brands, etc. out there. This is what I'm just using right now. I find it, found it absolutely brilliant, actually. It's a really, really light monofilament. Um, it's, uh, this one's in the 12 pounds breaking strain. And uh, basically, it's, it's, been, it's served really well for um, not just zig fishing, but also for this. Again, it's light, it it's sort of will sit on the surface. A little tip for you, if you ever have problems like getting uh, your, your hook link to actually sit on the surface, use something like Vaseline. I always carry a bit of Vaseline in, in like my, bait, my bait bag. And the reason I do that is because what you can do is just as it, uh, wind it through basically with some, some of the Vaseline on your fingers or if you've got a little chapstick one which I've got I just put it through on that. And basically what that does is it lets it sit on the surface a lot easier. A company with that you need for surface fishing you want something like this. This is a float. Uh, this one in particular is made by, made by Corda. Um, again there's many more on the market which you can go and explore. This is the one that I use. Um, this is a one piece um, float basically and the reason why that's one piece is because it means that it's self cocked which means stuff like bubble floats or anything like that you actually have to add water etc to it and it could be quite fiddly. This one you chuck straight out it's going to be working first time for you. One piece solid, uh, solid body you can see it at the top here it's got this sort of sight bob at the top and then you've got this boom which actually comes out. Now the reason why this comes out is because along the bottom of, hit of this base here you can actually put, um, you can actually th feed through a line. So if you're using, um, if you, for example this one will go about 60 yards, if you suddenly think well, actually the fish are now sort of 80 yards in front of me, you can exchange this top, this, this body here for, a, for a, a, a heavier piece basically. Or indeed if you want to go more short range and have more finer, a finer detail on it, basically you can go to a short one. And this will always stay on the line. You'll also notice with this one, it's got a flat, uh, flat end. And the reason why it's got that is because it actually gives some inertia against the water. Um, basically, so the flat, uh, it sits on the surface like so. So this is the surface. And then as soon as a cart actually pulls into it, it's because it's flat, it'll actually cause inertia against the water and actually help that hook put, uh, hold it in, into the carp's mouth. So let's talk a bit about bait uh, that we're using. 
Um, I, I like to use um, a very traditional sort of way of surface fishing, and that's using dog mixers. Now you can also get stuff like floating halibut pellets, etc., which are actually very, very good. Um, but we're trying to be cheap here, maybe. Um, so the reason why I use dog mixers is really available for a start. Very, very cheap, and also you don't mind throwing out a load of freebies to the birds as well. Now, this is the, the next thing that I'm going to come on to is about bird and wildlife. Um, birds basically will get in your way when surface fishing. It's just going to be one of those things. Unless you're fortunate enough to find a lake which hasn't got a lot of bird life, you're going to be finding seagulls, coots, ducks, mallards, etc., all going for your surface baits as well, as well as the carp. So, how do we stop this from happening? How do we stop the birds from actually getting hold of it? The fact is, you can't. You can't really sort of start clapping off the birds, etc. So what we do is we use uh, more and more mixers. Basically, what we want to do is feed off the birds. Now, the one way to actually do this is if you're on a sort of slightly emptier lake, is actually go to the other side of the lake, feed all the birds up that end, and basically make sure they're full up. Whether that be you take an extra loaf of bread, perhaps as well. Um, using bread, etc., that will fill them up nice and quickly. Therefore, you can get on with your fishing and try and catch some carp. Okay, so let's talk about hook baits. Hook baits, again, you can use stuff like dog mixers. It's, it's a slightly more difficult because trying to hair rig a dog mixer is, well, I mean, when I first started fishing, uh, I actually tried uh, in vain to try and like, hair, hair rig uh, dog mixers, and it took forever. You know, one in five actually wouldn't break up on me. So there's one way of doing that. You can also use stuff like um, a glue, etc., to actually glue it to the shank of the hook, etc. Um, in my opinion, it's just a long way about doing things. What I like to use these days is actually an artificial mixer. Um, this one uh, is made by Enterprise Tackle and it's basically a self-cocking self -cocking, um, mixer as well. So what it will do is actually you can have the hook on the outside, of, uh, on the top basically of the mixer. So from a cart's perspective they're looking up at this, uh, this mixer and think it's a normal mixer, it looks fine, I'm going to grab it. They grab it and all of a sudden there's a hook in their mouth. So I think it's a really, really good piece of, uh, piece of kit that to have. So look out for those in your tackle shop next time you're down. Um, when it comes to actually striking into fish, well, that's very, very simple. All you do is you've got to keep an eye on your hook bait. You've got to be very uh, sit by your rod, etc. have it nice and tight. And then as soon as you can see a carp slurp in, you'll see the line just slightly drag, in, drag, back, drag back towards the carp. And so at that point, what you want to do is just strike into that fish. Um, it's not a sort of really hard motion. Don't do it sort of half arse or anything like that. It's a firm, positive sweep, a strike like that, basically. So at that sort of speed. That way, you'll actually be able to sink the hook straight into the carp's mouth, and then you'll be onto a play. Now, remember, obviously, uh, you are playing this on a lighter tackle, so don't be tempted to just reel it straight in and be, hope it will come straight in. You've got to take your time when surface fishing, um, and it's a, it's a fantastic sport for surface fishing, not just because of the action that you start seeing, because it's very visual, um, but also because of the fights you end up with. Um, the carp are much uh, very wary of the fact that they're being caught on the top, and I think they just fight harder in my opinion, and I think it's a fantastic sport. So if you haven't tried it before, get yourself some, uh, get yourself some gear, get yourself some mixers from your local supermarket, etc., and just go out and enjoy yourself. It's a fantastic time. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, for more tips on carp, tricks, tips, uh, stuff like rigs, baits, etc., go to my website, www.carpfishingguide.com. And while you're there, don't forget to download my free e-report on my top 20 tips to help stop you blanking. My name's Ben. Tight lines.